Now, I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro Max for about two weeks now, and I have a confession. I miss my Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now, as you guys know, I currently have a lot of phones, but as of 2023, I can say that out of all my phones, I mainly switch between Google, Apple, and Samsung. And once the iPhone 15 Pro Max came out, I decided to retire my Galaxy S23 Ultra to fully dive myself in the Apple ecosystem when I switched to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And at first, I really did love it. It was very smooth. I love Apple CarPlay. I can easily move things to my MacBook. And I love the fact that I can now use the same charger as my Galaxy and Pixel. But as time went on, I started feeling like I needed more out of my iPhone, but I didn't know why. And I think the reason for that is because the Galaxy S23 Ultra is truly a phone that feels like it's worth over a thousand bucks. And what I mean by that is that there is much more features, arguably better software, and so much more going for it as a true flagship phone. With my iPhone, I felt a little bored after a while. And yes, yeah, social media integration is top tier, but other than that, the Galaxy S23 Ultra is spanking the 15 Pro Max in damn near every category. And in this video, I want to go over some stuff that made me miss my Galaxy S23 Ultra and also give a comparison between the two to show side by side why it's a better phone. Now, the first thing that made me miss my Galaxy S23 Ultra was the customization. Now, the customization is pretty big for me because even though I'm not someone who uses Goodlock or even Nova, I like to add necessary widgets to my home screen to be much more productive. And to name an example, I have this productivity app called Tick Tick, and on my S23 Ultra, I can not only add my to-do list to my homepage, but I can also make it transparent to fit the whole aesthetic. And as you guys can see, I've done this with many other widgets and they are all transparent, but with my iPhone, you can't do it at all. And this is a minor example, but if you wanted to, you can literally customize anything you want on your Galaxy. And this is something that made me miss it. Now going into the more minor reasons as to why I miss my Galaxy S23 Ultra, the faster charging speeds, the fact that it came with an S Pen for no extra charge, the fact that it had a better display and you'll get much more screen real estate, and also the fact that it had a much better scratch resistance. And the final reason as to why I miss my Galaxy S23 Ultra is because unlike the 15 Pro Max, it feels like it's actually worth the price. iPhones have been feeling extremely similar to me over the past few years, so I may be dealing with some fatigue, but I vividly remember when I first picked up my S23 Ultra, it was fresh, had a ton of features, and it felt like I really got my money's worth. And now that I gave you guys some insight as to why I missed my S23 Ultra, I wanna go more into a comparison to show how the 15 Pro Max is holding up after two weeks. Now looking at both displays, the S23 Ultra has a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED display, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR display, and I can't lie, both are very impressive, and all across the board, they were very close. Whenever I was scrolling through the S23 Ultra and 15 Pro Max, it looked very nice, everything looked very good. Both phones had really good responsiveness, and I really had no complaints about the overall feel of both phones. But I will say that in terms of sharpness and speed, the S23 Ultra wins due to Apple having slower animations. Now, the S23 Ultra and 15 Pro Max have a 120Hz refresh rate. Scrolling through the OS and many different apps felt very smooth on both. And whenever comparing each phone's refresh rate, I will say that based on you guys, it is personal preference. If you want a smoother feel, the 15 Pro Max wins, but if you want that very quick and snappy feel, the S23 Ultra wins, and that's the one that I prefer. Both phones have bezels that are extremely small. Right here, you can see that they're both wrapped around the screen. The S23 Ultra's bezels are definitely more slim because it has a slightly curved screen, and it also has a hole punch camera, so you'll get much more screen real estate on the S23 Ultra. Now, when it comes to brightness, the S23 Ultra is at 1750 nits, and the 15 Pro Max is at 2000 nits, which is really good, but when comparing in real life, the 15 Pro Max was definitely the brightest. Another thing that I realized is that the 15 Pro Max's whites were much more rich as well, and the S23 Ultra gives off a more cool tone. Something that I didn't like as much as the 15 Pro Max was the S23 Ultra's facial recognition. When comparing both to each other, I can easily say that the 15 Pro Max wins, it's faster, works better at night, and it works better no matter the position of your face. But something that I do like more about the S23 Ultra was the fact that it has an on-screen fingerprint sensor that works very well. And honestly, this is my preferred method when unlocking my phone, and unfortunately, it's something that the 15 Pro Max doesn't have. Have. Now, the resolution of the 15 Pro Max and S23 Ultra is an amazing benefit when it comes to consuming media and playing games. Gaming was something that I did a ton of when using both phones, and I would say that when it comes to looks, the Galaxy S23 Ultra does have slightly better graphics. I was also able to see everything very clearly when watching videos. I preferred the S23 Ultra since it had a bigger screen and boxier frame, but that's just my personal preference. Now, the Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery compared to the 15 Pro Max's 4,400 milliamp hour battery, and even though there might be a nicely sized difference, on the spec sheet, both phones were able to give me all day battery life, but the S23 Ultra's battery is definitely better. And mind you, I'm the type of person that is on my phone all day doing things like writing scripts, playing B-roll, shooting videos, watching YouTube videos, and also doing many other things for a longer period of time. And I'm usually getting over eight hours of screen time a day on my S23 Ultra and about seven hours on my 15 Pro Max. 
I don't cut any corners. I always have 5G on, no auto brightness. I maxed out the resolution and I never use power saving mode. So I was very impressed. Even when I'm gaming, the battery hurt the 15 Pro Max a little bit more. Something that I admired about the S23 Ultra was that I've had this phone for a very long time now. And the fact that it's still holding up very well, I'm extremely impressed. And if I could give you guys a quick estimate, I would say that my battery on the S23 Ultra is about 10 to 15% more when compared to the 15 Pro Max's battery. But if you want a battery that will last you all day, you really can't go wrong with either. Now looking at software, the Galaxy S23 Ultra supports Android 13, which is soon to be 14, and is also supported by One UI 5.1, the 15 Pro Max is on iOS 17. And so far in terms of smoothness, the Galaxy S23 Ultra wins in this category. And like I always say, when it comes to software, it's genuinely personal preference. The iPhone has better social media integration, iMessage, FaceTime, and a very simplistic style. And the S23 Ultra has more features, more customization, and a more hands-on feel. Many people love simplicity, many people love more features, and I personally love what each has to offer. But again, in terms of software, I really do prefer the S23 Ultra. The always on display on the Galaxy S23 Ultra was much more customizable than the 15 Pro Max. I like using social media on my iPhone more. I liked answering emails and anything business related on my S23 Ultra. And I love the different built-in apps that each software had. And I also decided to test out some games on my Galaxy S23 Ultra and 15 Pro Max. I play Asphalt 9, which is a game that can really test out both powerful chips. And as you can see, both held up really well and I didn't get any lags while playing. Now, something else that I wanted to touch on was the haptics. The S23 Ultras were used much more whenever I back out of an app took out my S Pen and did many other things, the haptics felt much more premium. Now, the final thing that I wanted to note was that the Galaxy S23 Ultra will be getting four years worth of software upgrades, while the 15 Pro Max will be getting five to six years. So when it comes to longevity, the 15 Pro Max will last you longer. Now, looking at speakers, both the S23 Ultra and 15 Pro Max had some really loud speakers that were very good whenever I used them. I would usually use them in a house whenever watching videos on social media or YouTube, and I didn't have to turn them all the way up because of how loud they were on the lower tiers of volume. The S23 Ultras are better overall, they have more bass, the sound quality is better, and they're a little louder, so when it comes to comparing both speakers, the S23 Ultra is the winner. And right here, I'm going to give you guys an idea of how each speaker sounds. And there it is you guys. The reason why I kind of regret switching to my iPhone 15 Pro Max. And don't worry, I'm going to stick it out because I am human and things can change. But at the moment, I really do miss my S23 Ultra. And let me know down in the comments, you guys, which phone do you have? The Galaxy S23 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max? And again, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Peace. Hey!